Hello one and all, and welcome to Behind the Glass, the podcast which aims to take you behind the scenes of the YouTube channel Seen Through Glass, as well as the automotive and social media worlds. I'm your host, Sam, from that YouTube channel Seen Through Glass, and alongside me, it is of course, Mr. Tony from Gravelwood Car Sales. Hello everyone. Hello sir, how are, are you? you? How's your day been? It's rather late that we're recording today's podcast, it's 7pm. Yeah, you come to my work today. I did come to your work, yeah. And uh, I dropped you back here and then we're doing a podcast. There we go, it's a, it's a full on day. We're just busy guys, aren't we're we? We're just really busy guys, yeah, yeah, yeah. not earning any money, but we're really busy. <laughs> <laughs> Trying our best. <laughs> yeah. Usually we like to record our podcast in the morning when we're full of energy, we've we had do. A coffee, maybe a banana bread. Uh, I'm not really sure how this is going to go doing one so, <laughs> so late in the evening. We may get to the end and be like... So oh, we'll be asleep on the floor. <laughs> yeah, yawning. <laughs> yeah. Um, but anyway, welcome for those of you that are tuning in. If you're watching on YouTube, hello. Thank you for watching. Uh, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss future episodes. If you're listening to us, keep listening to us on whatever audio platform uh, you are listening to us on. We have to give a shout out to our patrons. We do. Oh, the best people in the world. And we've raised some money. Oh, we've raised some money and we love you people for it. Uh, a whole load of people have come forth and decided to support the podcast via our Patreon, which is patreon.com forward slash behind the glass. Um, we're going to shout out today, Alex Penrose. Alex, Alex. We love you, lad. And Ashley Neal. Well done, Ashley. Um, yeah, both of you. Thank you so much for signing up, for, for supporting us, for being part of this podcast community. Absolutely. I feel like we need to come up with a better name than, than patrons, like, you know, BTGers. What? <laughs> <laughs> the behind the glass army. <laughs> you know, because like, cause like that's what Justin Bieber has. He has the Beliebers. The, the Beliebers. And the Hamilton Knights. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe they can be the, I don't know what they can be, but if you guys we, want to come up with a name for yourselves, let us know. Yeah, we probably should have thought about this. Sorry. Yeah, anyway, but yes, amazing to have the support of Patreon. If you're interested in supporting the podcast, in helping us to improve this production uh, day by day, then of course uh, you can go and check it out. As I say, patreon.com forward slash seen through glass. Behind the glass, behind the glass, forward slash behind the glass. <laughs> Made a little slip there. Um, anyway, today's episode, it's a bit of a sort of general car news, car chat episode. No specific main topic, but it's because we kind of finally have some car news to discuss. Yeah, it's been a bit dry on the fin on the ground, the old car chat, but we're just going to have a chat like, like we just talk without the camera rolling. Well, that's exactly it. That's what we would usually be doing if we were spending time together in a friendly capacity, but we're not actually friends, so we no. don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to dive into it in a topic that, uh, you know, I, I am passionate about and I worry that maybe you're not going to be that passionate about. The new Bentley Bentayga. Yes, I saw on Twitter mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you putting something up the other day and I went in a little bit, but... I mean, it's just a lot of money, isn't it? It's a lot of money. It's always been a lot of money. And, and let's just clarify, it's not exactly new. It's a facelift. Correct. To bring it in line with kind of the other Bentley models and products. And and it's actually quite a subtle facelift. I think the main standout is probably the rear end. I think from the front, it's hard to tell that it's that different, but mm. the back's got sort of, I think it must be, is it the GT Speed tail light? Yeah. Uh, is that what they call the it? Con the Continental. Thank, no, what? Yeah. Um, yeah. Continental. What's the four-door one called? Molzen. No, the smaller one. GT Speed, no. No. <laughs> no you've got no. the Continental, which is, yeah. what, which is what you fanboy over. Of course, best the car Bento in the world. Uh, and then the, is it the Molesen, isn't it? Yeah, that's the big one. Hold on. Yeah, well, I mean, I mean, then they do three. Flying Spur. The flying Spur, yeah. That's the one. Anyway. <laughs> I think the Bentega has taken elements of, yes, Continental and Flying Spur. It probably Spur. looks better from the back than the old car. I yeah. agree. But, um, well, they've always been big money, as you say, and and they're kind of garish, I think, or Larry is mm. uh, is a great way to describe it. It's a lot of chrome. It's a very statement. But in a world where apparently it's totally normal to drive Rolls Royce Cullinans around, because um, that is London at the moment. Literally, I see them everywhere. Yeah, Bentegas are suddenly a little bit, you know, subdued. Yeah, and it, and it's funny where where we've gone now with these cars. We spoke about it before in terms of five or ten years ago. It, you've hit the jackpot if you drive a Range Rover. And now they're just like, literally, no one cares anymore. No one cares. I've been invited to test out the new Aston Martin DBX, obviously, which we've been talking about for a while, been waiting for a while. And I know uh, Mr. JWW is all over. I was he waiting to get an invite for that. I don't think you... <laughs> <laughs> if you were, you were probably going to be waiting for an incredibly long time. I would think so. I'm not sure Aston Martin love you that much, Tony, I'll be honest. I'm not sure that they're your biggest fans. No. Um, but yes, uh, uh, but but I'm just a bit like, meh, meh. Yeah. 
And unfortunately, I think we're going to see more and more of it. I mean, the new Cayenne GTS I bumped into at Porsche. We know Ferrari SUV is coming. Obviously, new Ben Tiger, uh, Euros. I mean, it is everywhere. I mean, everyone's just making SUVs. So I kind of like that they've updated it because I've always been a fan. But apart from that, it's not exactly revolutionary, is it? It's a car no, no, we no, know no, about. No. People will still go and buy them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, to move on to a car that I don't think we would have usually spoken about, but we're going to because I think it's probably the best looking car that's been released in a long time. It's the Volkswagen Arteon shooting brake. Now, I'm quite excited because Tony actually hasn't seen pictures of this yet. No. So I'm going to bring them up on my laptop. imagine what it looks like, though. But Let's see if you can see that without me breaking everything. Uh, mate, it looks like, it looks like a Renault Megane estate. <gasps> Don't be so rude. No, Renault makes it's pretty better. No, well, okay, fine. <laughs> Sorry, maybe that was me being rude then, <laughs> assuming that Renault don't. I think it's very good looking. I, I, I hope for those of you on YouTube, I've put some overlays here. <laughs> if I haven't, I've been incredibly lazy. <laughs> but for, for those of you listening, uh, the Volkswagen Arteon, where would you position it? It's kind of like VW's A6. It's a big no, car. No, do you know what? I, I was thinking about it. Go on. And it, it's probably Skoda Superb size. Okay. But Good yeah, chat. so A6. Yeah, but A6. I, in terms of pricing, it's probably Skoda Superb-ish price. I remember having a go one. I had one for about 10 days, the sort of normal saloon shape. You come to uh, me in it. Yeah, got, I had a gold R-line spec. Yeah. It was super nice. I mean, it's it's a step above a Golf R in terms of luxury, but a similar kind of setup and very identifiable as a VW product. But I think... I think that shooting brake is exceptionally good looking. And if for a car that's sort of, you know, a bit more obtainable or achievable than it's like Mercedes, Audi, BMW counterparts, I think, yeah, I think win. Yeah. But Volkswagen always do that. I mean, you've got the, the Tuareg, haven't you? I mean, that new Tuareg is a Agreed. perfectly good car. And and it, it's loads cheaper than the than the other three German brands, you know, the Mercedes, Audi and BMW. And but I think the design language has now caught up with the, you know, the quality. Because obviously it's always been the sort of cheaper component. I've been researching it. They're expecting prices to be, well, sub 50K around, you know, 40, 45K. Mm. Um, so they've always been a bit more affordable. What engines? Uh, Here we go. I haven't done this much research. <laughs> I mean, I think they're, they're going to do all of them. They get three hundred under the bus. They'll, they'll do basically. a three hundred and sixteen horsepower R variant. Oh right, okay. So you know, they'll do proper stuff, plug-in hybrids, all these bits and bobs. You know, all right, all right, okay. So, so I'm going to ask you a question then. Oh god, don't. No, no, no. Yeah. No, you, I mean, you flex your muscles. You, I mean, you got to answer it. So the Arteon then, the yeah. R Arteon. Yeah. Or the M three forty Touring. M three forty Touring. Well, then it's not a competitor, then, is it? I mean, that's what I'd have had the BMW. Uh, Same but, money. But the bit, no, it's not. The BMW will be 15 grand more because I've looked at it over and over again. No, why much is that car? They re they're reckoning around 40. They haven't revealed pricing yet, but they reckon it's going to start at 40 for the R line shooting brake. So, so an M340i Touring is 40 grand. Now. No, it's not spec'd up. It's like 58. Yes, the list. I mean, you do realise that BMW give 15 grand for all their new cars. Well, I tried and they told me no. <laughs> no, yeah, they told you no. They told me. <laughs> because you're not very persuasive. I should have said you in. I was like, oh, this looks lovely. Could I have a discount? Um, it starts at, uh, ha, UK price 55. Kapoom, you know nothing, Mr. What's Salesman. 340i touring. Yeah, yeah, but but go online, mate. They'll be early 40s. Okay, fine, but that's not the point. Arteon shooting brakes, if they start at 40, will probably be 35. They're not priced competitively they're not they don't go up against each other price wise okay and so, <laughs> that's not that's your uh, okay you're wrong but i'm not gonna argue with you <laughs> yeah, because it's very rare i do get it wrong no but but no you are wrong and i think rtion's a different size in my head it's bigger than three series well yeah if, it, if it's skoda superb size it's i mean, I'll just get a skoda superb mate <laughs> I mean, they're great. You, you and the Skoda Superb. Mate, they're great. Why didn't you car? Anyway, it's all you've talked about for the last 10 minutes. But I actually Skoda have Superb. got one in stock. Oh. <laughs> That'll be your reasoning. You say, oh, I've forgotten how good this no. car is. <laughs> Mate, they're really good. I'm sure. Good for you. Yeah. Uh, also, is my microphone a bit distorted today? Are you getting that? Am no, I a bit just like... your voice. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry if that's coming out on the recording. Uh, yeah. We've been having some issues with the desk recently and I've been a bit distorted. So, anyway, we're going to move on from the shooting break because I feel like we're going down a, a route that neither of us want to go down. We'll another argument. Basically arguing about Skoda <laughs> Superb. <laughs> yeah. which has nothing to do with the Arsenal shooting break. Um, and move on to another car, which has got launched. Look at this. This car news, left, right and centre. It's exciting. It's like Geneva 2021. Uh, honestly.
Firstly, that's not happening though, is it? So. Oh, no, but the, this is the virtual version of it. No, but the event's a, not happening. A year early. No, but it's not happening. It's cancelled, isn't it? No, but we're going to do it now. No, but it's, not, it's not an event. Geneva well, we're going to make it an event. <laughs> Exclusive. Behind the Exclusive. glass launches every car in the world in yeah, March we're running 2021. <laughs> um, okay. Ineos. Yes. So do you know about this? I do. Okay. Wow. I'm impressed. Um, oh. <laughs> have launched something called the Grenadier. And the reason I asked, do you know, because Ineos obviously new to the automotive segment. Uh, they are famously, this is like a chemicals company. It's one of those weird companies that's insanely successful, but you've never heard of them. Mm-hmm. Their turnover is something like more, they're like bigger than Facebook and Coca-Cola and whatever. And the guy who runs it, a guy called Jim Ratcliffe is like a, like a sort of Dyson. He's like a billionaire just, yeah, just yeah, doing yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah. And I think just suddenly they went, you know, I want to start an automotive uh, part of the business. Yep, yep. Uh, and essentially from what I get, it's kind of like Land Rover stopped making the Defender. Yep. And in general, no one is making a sort of rugged, uh, utilitarian four by four anymore. They're Apart all- from G-Wagon. Well, no, but even the G wagon now is it's okay, fine, rudimental in the way that it's been made, but it's now a plush AMG, one hundred and fifty thousand pound Sloan Street mobile. Yeah, but it's still rugged. I mean, you wouldn't really want to take it off road, but you can. I think the only rugged four x four that I know of recently is the Suzuki Jimny. Fair, an actual working tool. I mean, yes, you Have could. Have you t- one of them? Uh, I haven't. No, honestly. <laughs> Well, okay, so so the Grenadier, if you haven't seen pictures of it, for those of you uh, listening or watching, uh, it does, if you squint, it's very Defender, old Defender, very important to say, and then a little bit G-Wagon, and then a little bit something else, I can't really tell what. I think it's really good looking. As a fan of the old Defender, I think it's really good. And it's almost like this is what the new Defender should have been. Yeah. Um, Now talk to me, because I did sort of slightly preempt you on the fact we're going to be chatting about the Grenadier. Uh, and you mentioned that you've gone out recently in a new Land Rover Defender. The new Defender, which is nothing like the old one. Well, I clearly. Mean it, I, mean it, I mean, it drives like a Discovery, like the new Discovery. I mean, it's it's completely gone away. It's just another excuse for Land Rover to build another model that's exactly the same as all the other models they they, they build. Did it make any sense to you in the sense where you were in it, you went, oh, you know, okay, I get it. If you are X, Y, or Z, why you'd buy this car? No, I liked it. Oh, you did like no, it? No, I really liked it. Yeah, because the old Defender, or right, it was rugged, but it was awful. Oh, to awful! Drive. It was awful, terrible. I love them, but they're, they're awful. They're awful. This car is, from what I could see, I went out ten minute driving it. From what I could feel, it was all of the things of the old Defender, but it drove properly. So okay, it, 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 I really liked it, mate. Like, I would you have it as a work? car because yeah. you used to have the truck for a while didn't yeah you? yeah i mean i mean i'm sure they're going to build a commercial version they've got it it's coming out they literally released it the other yeah. day they're doing a commercial version it's it's very affordable i think 35 grand plus fat I yeah think. the only thing that put me off and i don't know if they're going to do a bigger engine in it that there was that, that two liter mm. e-gen engine or whatever yeah. it is which is basically what's in an evoke or a discovery sport but but what in a vehicle like that why do you want a bigger engine well, I mean, if you're going to tow or go up a mountain, which is what they're supposed to do, I mean... It I mean, hasn't got loads of torque, though? I mean, imagine the diesel one's very torquey, Yeah, isn't it's it? not got loads of torque, is it? I mm. mean, it, you know, it's been it's probably been remapped and it's probably got more than a, an evoke. I don't know the actual power figures, but yeah, I'd, I'd want a three-litre Something diesel, chunky yeah, on yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. they're obviously going to do the SVR, which is kind of ridiculous, but they are going to do the SVR yeah. version. And you know that Land Rover are switching all their engines to BMW engines? Yeah. You know that bit? Mad. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. I mean, BMW just killing it in terms of engine supply. But at the it moment. does make sense because they're, they're straight six three litre engines. They're very good and they're all compliant for uh, ULEZ and Euro 6 and that. And they, they're bulletproof. Mate. Bulletproof. Yeah. Bulletproof fanta- and perform really well. They do. As you say, tick all the, all the boring boxes that yeah. engines need to tick these days. Uh, and I think affordable and compliant for all these. Other companies that want to fit them into cars, they're sort of easy to slot into cars yeah, 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 and, yeah. And, and from, you know, ground up kind of builds. Um, I, new Defender I'm weird about, I haven't been in one yet and I do need to go and drive one and experience one. I'm interested that you say it's still got elements of old Defender that you picked up on that because yeah. looking at it, I'm just like, I just do not get it. And I've seen a few on the road now. I have seen a few yeah, out yeah, and about. Yeah, there's been a few. I, th- I think it's ugly actually mm. rather than even just, uh, you know, the wrong direction. I think I think it's ugly. I think it's big. I think it's chunky. 
Um, and it's too expensive, I think, for it's what... It's very expensive. You know, once you've done anything nice. I mean, I'm... 60 a, odd grand. Yeah. I really tried to spec up a really, like, steel wheels kind of basic version, and it was still nudging 50. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, it's hard to escape that. And, yeah, I, for me, I wanted them to build what I think Ineos have now created or are going to be creating. That, again, BMW engines. Yeah. yeah. Um, and... The thing is, I don't have a need for a vehicle like that. Of like, course it's, not. It's like, I'm, I'm not a farmer. I don't go up <laughs> mountains. But I, I always loved Old Defender for its simplicity. Like I used, that was my kind of car, my runaround car. When I was growing up, my family have always had one. Um, again, my dad, I think, likes to make himself feel more rugged by like using the Defender. Yeah. Uh, you don't have to use the choke. I'm like, dad, you don't even know what that is. <laughs> someone, just, someone just told you that at some point. Um, so, yeah. I, I need to get out there and actually have a go. I have been offered a few times, but I've just been a bit like, oh, new defender, bore off. But I'm intrigued that you've now said that. No, yeah. The, the, uh, like, the fact that they're a lot of money, mm. that's the only thing that put me off because they are a lot of money, but it is a it is a good car. Would you be worried about reliability though? Across, of course. Yeah, that's the thing. Because the old defenders, they were crap to drive, but they were sort of, they kept going and you could also work on them cheaply and easily or get someone else to work on them cheaply and easily. They're full of computers now. Yeah, that's it's the just thing. Just sitting in a Range Rover Sport. Well, there you go. Or Discovery even, yeah. And so if you're going to get some little annoying glitches, that's the last thing you're going oh, you to want will. when you're out on your farm. Yeah, or... yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. the commercial ones are not an exciting opportunity. So yeah, so so Ineos, watch this space. Uh, still a few years away, I think, from seeing uh, production cars on the road, but you can go and check out. There's a um, sort of Factory cool... in Wales. Br- Bridgend? Bridgend, the factory. Yeah, but wasn't there some announcement recently about changing that? Changing it or delaying it or something I read. I only caught the last bit. I think it's cool. I mean, if I'm honest, I don't really care where it's built. You know what I mean? Like Zozzy's not another car built in Birmingham. So (laughs) honestly, everything that comes out of Birmingham falls apart. Stop. (laughs) We love you, Birmingham. We love I sometimes I question why I let you speak on this podcast. You've probably literally just lost us about 50% of our audience. No. Birmingham, you're other, great. No. <laughs> Have we got a lot of Birmingham fans? I don't know, but no. just in case we do. <laughs> oh, anyway. Do you mean cars modified out of Birmingham? No, no, mean? no. I mean, Land Rover. Coventry. Yeah, Birmingham, Coventry, Gaydon. I mean, it's all there, isn't it? It's all the Midlands. <laughs> all in that mix, basically. All in that mix, yeah. Oh, God damn it. I don't know why I let you talk. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay, well, look, let's go to the other end of the spectrum from complete sort of, you know, utilitarian, utali- utali- yeah, anyway, hardcore 4x4 to full-on supercar. And I've picked up a rumour, a little birdie told me, uh, which I know Paul Wallace kind of teased back in the Lamborghini special at the oh, beginning of no. the year. Well, hold on. I know I'm a big Lambo fanboy right now, but oh. you were at some point too. The Huracan Super Trofeo Homologato. Yeah, so this is the... This is the 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 GT two RS exact uh, uh, competitor competitor. So yeah, so so uh, that name is completely unconfirmed. By the way, that's that she just like basically sort of made up slash what some people are suggesting it's going to yeah, be called. Yeah, yeah. And it is theoretically a road going version of the Huracan Super Trofeo, the race car, which you know you can go out and you can buy or you can run in the in the Huracan series. Um, it's or a take hardcore off and performante, basically. Oh, but like apparently a step even further than that. Okay, so this is fine. supposed to be and it's supposed to be super limited being offered first, a bit like the Pista Pilotti, it's being offered firstly to Super Trofeo customers. Okay, fun. Um, uh, and yeah, good noises theoretically, I think though, actually going to be a disaster because <laughs> <laughs> I think it's too far. Like, Huracan, great. Performante, apparently amazing. S- yes, they could go one step further because we've now got Huracan Evo, so you think there should be something else. But a sort of, a homologated version of an actual race car. I, I, I don't know. I just think... I... Well, you know what makes me laugh in all of this as well is that people are going to buy them to do track days. They're not going to be able to do track days because it'd be too loud. Too loud. Well, not with the OPF filters, but... Um, but no, but yeah. I, yeah, I just... I think when you look at it, are you going to get that over a GT2 RS? And I know what you're going to say. Oh, no. Thank you. Yeah, no, thank you. And, and that's my... I think it's still going to be sold. But... I was going to say, I think it's still going to be sold to just a loyalist of Lamborghini customer. But if you look back So they're going to make two. <laughs> yes, <literally. laughs> What was the um, Stradale? Super, was it Super Trofeo Stradale? The Gallardo, that was it. Super Trofeo Stradale. Yeah. Which is the same yeah, principle, yeah, the same really idea. Yeah, I mean, I really well, couldn't care less. <laughs> but arguably the most desirable and collectible and lusted after version of 
the Gallardo. Is that the one and you want? No, I want the Gallardo Superleggera. <laughs> The Super Trofeo Stradale. Big wing. As they same principle, it's basically a road-going version of the Super Trofeo car, the Garda Super Trofeo okay. car. And that's what they're supposed to be, which I think is cool. You know, my beloved Challenge Stradale is essentially that. It's a Stradale street version of the Challenge car. You have a 360. No, no but my beloved. It's not mine. It's oh. mean, like, in general, the car I love. Okay, like, fine. Move on. <laughs> so Before I go in. Uh, yeah. I'm intrigued by this car because I love a hardcore race inspired racing variant. Well, don't get car. too intrigued because you're yeah. probably not going to be able to get in it. No. <laughs> <laughs> Whether I can actually fix, I can't fit in hurricanes. That's what I mean. Yeah, exactly. But, but I, you know, I'm sort of excited, but I'm ready to be disappointed, basically. Okay. You okay. will be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's move on to a car that hopefully you're going to have a bit more of an opinion on because talking about GT2 RS rivals. Oh. He's perked up like a meerkat there again. Oh, for rival, our, rival. For, for our listeners. I, I only heard GT2 RS. <laughs> You're like, rival, I'm going to go back to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've seen some spy pictures, which are pretty much reveal pictures, of the long-awaited AMG GT Black Series from Mercedes. Mm. And you've seen these pictures, right? Yes. What are your thoughts? Well, it looks a bit untidy, if I'm honest. Mm-hmm. It looks a bit fussy. If you mm-hmm. look at a GT2 RS or... Uh, the beloved GD2 uh, yeah or or, or or anything of that that track focus stuff it's not I mean they've got big wings on them some of them but but they're not like fussy like I mean there's gills and there's sky side skirts and I understand aero and that but I mean I, I mean it's a bit like, mansory isn't it Yes, yeah. <laughs> that's what it is. It's like one of them have got hold of it. So if none of you have seen the pictures, uh, I said they sort of leaked from what looked like a sort of garage or a filming location that Mercedes seemed to be working with this car and it is what everyone is accepting to be the Black Series, but unconfirmed from Mercedes. Um, and yeah, it, it, it's almost as if it's um, the AMG GT3 race car in a sort of road livery or without any kind of sponsor stickers. It's that aggressive. They're a huge, the whole bonnet is basically gills mm. on both sides of the bonnet. You've got massive sort of canards on the front. Um, you've got this huge wing on the back, uh, which I think we can't knock because 2RS and 3RS Porsches uh, have massive wings. So yeah, like, I'm yeah. kind of going to look past that. But the car that's been spied, uh, spied I think doesn't do itself any favours because it's got weird, like parts of it are black, parts of it are silver, and it's cr- like... It just looks a bit fuggly. Yeah. It's not, maybe it they'll straighten it out, maybe. Yeah, and know. maybe in all black or in another colour, yeah. it would look more cohesive and better. It just doesn't look good, I don't think, in that in those, in those that spec that it was... It almost looked unfinished. I'd like to drive one. Okay, well, that's what I was going to come on to. Because we all know, we were both, but you were especially big fan of the GTR. Mm. Um, we've spoken about some of the issues you had with it, but you were a big fan of the car in general. Um, you ha- Have you had a go in the Pro yet? No. But you want to. Yeah. yeah. I'd, I'd buy one. Would but you? Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't give the money that they are, obviously, because I just think it's too much money for a, for a Mercedes. What, what are they at the moment, GTR? Uh, I think I, I think they're like, on the market, they're like 180, 185. I, mean, what I don't would think you they're pay? selling for that. Well, the, 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 the biggest problem with the Pro is the R. I mean, an R's 100 grand, mate. Mm-hmm. So it's not worth double the money because it's got a little bit more aero and they've sorted the brakes out. I mean, it's... it's you know, they're the basic the same car. So when they hit what money would you start to go, oh yeah, I'll grab one of those? When they're twenty or thirty grand more than an R. Be interesting to see what happens. Because you're right, there's not a huge night and day difference, I don't think, between the two cars. Haven't driven uh, a pro either. Um I think they look good. But they are still commanding quite strong value. And in a world where lots of other cars aren't and lots of other cars are really pooping themselves. There's not loads of them. There's not loads of them. No. They're not coming through hot white and But there are lots of GTs. I mean, GT, GTC, GTS, GTR, Correct. GTR Pro, and now Black Series. Yeah. The Pro's doing pretty well, I think, actually. Yeah. Um, now, I've heard Black Series is going to be big money. Yeah. Like, we're talking 350 plus. Oh yeah, oh, I've heard it's going to be oh, big it's ridiculous. money. It's ridiculous. More than SVJ or SVJ similar. No, it's stupid. Which is stupid, but I think that's the world. Well, hashtag coronavirus. That's the world we lived no, in. No, no, no. Do we still? I don't know. But no, no. Do you have one of them or a pista? I mean, it's not a thing. I mean, you cannot have Mercedes charge three hundred and fifty grand for a car. Well, you know who's going to pay for it? Shmi. Yeah. <laughs> I think he's like you know. 
Whether he actually gets one or not, I don't know. But I, I do think he's been talking no, he about it quite one. a lot. Of course, he'll get one. Yeah, he'll get um, one. Yeah. How much was SLS Black Series when it came out? Two, two forty or something. I thought there'd be that money because that's GT Two RS money. Mm. I mean, there can't be a hundred grand more than the GT Two RS. So it was two hundred seventy-five thousand dollars SLS Black Series. Uh, sorry. Oh yeah, so SLS MG Black Series starting at one hundred and sixty. No, that's not right. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just keen to find well, out. I think they were in the twos. They were because, in the yeah, 200s. Uh, here we go. Black Series starts at 229. Yeah, yeah. And and that was a few years ago now. So okay. we're talking 2013. So yeah. seven years later, I think a Black Series has to be 300k plus. No, thank I, you. I, I, to, to fall in line with their historic pricing, yeah. I, I just do. Um, yeah, and I agree, like outrageous money. But if you look at all the other Black Series products, well, okay, CLK, maybe not. But but the Hero Black Series stuff, SLS, S65, they've they've fetched good money. Yeah, but they can't be that money, mate. Honestly, like, like I know you said there's got to be a jump, but 458 Speciali to Pista. Mm. It's not a huge jump there in price. No. 8% or something. I mean, I know times move on, but... It's too much, mate. And another eighty or ninety grand. The, the, the I, th- I think it'll definitely be that. I think it'll be eighty really? or ninety grand over a pro. Over a pro. It's so a pro's one ninety ish. Yeah, I, th- I think we're looking at two seventy five. I think, and then plus options will tip you over the three hundred mark. Oh I think God. if they go more than that, I think it is mad, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's if it's under three fifty. I will. Be expecting it if it's anything more than three fifty, then they're like amazing. Yeah, uh, honestly, I, I'll I'll be amazed. I, I think it's too dear over two fifty. Yeah, no, Me. no, I, no, no, no yeah, I yeah, do. Yeah, yeah, it's of ridiculous. It is ridiculous, as you say, for a Mercedes. But but I think what they will play on is the tech that's gone into the car, the Nurburgring lap times, the exclusivity, the fact Black Series don't come around. Like they're going to pull on every single string that they can, and every single Mercedes collector out there, Jer collector, Schmi, whoever it might be out there who are big Mercedes fanboys, will be all over this. They will have been for the last three years. Deposits will have been paid already. They won't care about the price. Yeah, I'll tell you, I'll tell you actually, which actually makes that car sound like good value for money. <clears throat> oh, God. Oh, God. Where are you going with this? Sim prices for 765 LTs. <gasps> mm. Mm. Okay, they so are what, a lot. What are you money. saying here? You're saying that the... Which is more desirable? The, I mean, either the Merc easily... I disagree. <laughs> I mean, you just do this for the entertainment. I mean, I you do cannot the, disagree. Just with to me, wind sure. you up. Now, are you are you deluded? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to put together my argument. In my I mean, head you cannot. I, speak. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I've got an argument. Uh, you haven't. No, honestly, though, if I had the money and I had to buy one or the other. I would buy the 765. No. <laughs> <laughs> you honestly don't believe that. If you are questioning Tony's re- reaction, go back and look at our previous episode, the McLaren special. And I think you will be equally as surprised as him as why I'm saying this. But it's because Mercedes annoy me. What annoys well, really me is the fact- me as well. But <laughs> <laughs> is the fact that there are 10 gazillion AMG GTs. Yeah. There are also 30,000 other Mercedes products and Vehicles. Of course. They're going to come along with this Black Series, claim it's the fucking best thing in the world. Oh, we've engineered it. There's so much technology. Oh, it's no bad wing. We broke every single lap time in the world. And therefore, we want 350 grand for it. <laughs> and someone's going to buy it. And now, oh, and then people will go nuts for it on Knightsbridge. But that's it. It's a Mercedes. Like, even the SLS Black Series that Schmee's got, and in general, cool car, but... Meh. It's just a Mercedes. This is a Mercedes. Like, it's yeah, cool Mercedes. Yeah, like, yeah. CLK Black Series is really cool. Schmee will be fuming. <laughs> but, you know, thing is, a sorry but, but no, I know Tim listens. So t- <laughs> sorry, Tim. Tim, like, feel free to rage and you can WhatsApp me later saying, well, this is why the Black Series is better. Fine, I get it. He's going to go in on this. But also, you know, everyone's got their own taste and that's the most important thing. Uh, but McLaren, it's, you know, it, it's, a, it's a supercar and this is supposed to be their LT. This is supposed to be their best product. This is supposed to be the most track focused mid-engine I don't know why to me if I had to I wouldn't pick either but if I had to buy one or the other because I think a front-engined hardcore track car doesn't make sense to me that's what it is that is it right there it's the it's the front-engine part of the AMG GT that just it doesn't add up it's going to be so hard I think it's going to be so brutal it and be hard, it's yeah. only going to be good on the Nürburgring the rest of the time 
what's the point? It's yeah. going to be, because remember the GTR ride was hard as hell. We used it to bounce was, around yeah. all over the place. Yeah. We used to enjoy driving the GT3 RS more than the GTR on that it, Irish trip. Yeah. Ro, you know, yeah. R- r- rid, ro- apart, apart rode the, the road better. Although the, the Merc was easier to drive. Than yeah, the Porsche. For, for sure, for sure. Yeah. But, but, but it is in terms of actually bumps and stuff like that. The, the 3 RS weirdly felt more compliant. With the yeah, road. yeah. So, so that's the whole thing. And then, and then, if I was really hammering it on track, I think I'd want to be in a mid-engine supercar. I think You'd not GT2 RS, wouldn't you? Well, yeah, know, but that's not on the <laughs> that's not on the equation. We're talking about strictly well, it's gotta be. 765 LT or or the GTR Black Series. That and that's why that's my reasoning. So you have the GTR Black Series and save yourself hundred grand. Well, you save yourself hundred grand in the fire bill as the LT went up on you know? the L. The, them LTs, mate. I mean, some people are specking them to over four hundred. You're grand. joking. I swear to no, God. No, that's a lie. Okay, it's not a lie. Have you seen? I mean, they list their early because you can free, do clear carbon. The, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. The, what are they free thirty or something list or free twenty or something? Thank God I bought my laptop today. <laughs> And you bring well, it every do, day. Do a lot of research. Um, uh, Clown season six five LT uh, price. Boom, boom, boom. Mate, there's so much. Oh money. yeah, you're so right. Uh, why does it always come out in US prices? I keep getting like lots of US or the dollar prices. Give me prices in pounds. I mean, I can understand how people are specking them crazy because someone will go through MSO. And be like, oh yes, I definitely need clear carbon everywhere, and I want a custom colour. And then before you know it, oh my god, that's a lot of money. But yeah. I honestly like. I mean, is that car worth a hundred grand more than the Pista? I mean, it can't be. Let's, I mean, it will well, be faster, but who cares? Let's not go into this because we did a whole episode. We did, know. but what I'm saying is, is where do these manufacturers get their price? I think half the time, mate, they make it up. Oh, they price it for the customer, and I think the thing is, the customer is going to ma- have a massive shift over the next. 18, 24 months. Because and he's going to have a massive shit and all if he buys Well, that's it. People aren't going to want to be spending this money. Yeah. And I, I always bring it back to my uh, Jaguar XE Project 8 moment when I went to the exclusive, you know, pre pre That's that four-door per- thing, isn't it? Yeah, the best car in the world. Uh, absolutely not. And I was there and somebody said, what do you think they're going to price it at? And at the bottom of the press release, I'd noticed a little line <laughs> that said, priced for, cust- c- pr- priced for collectors. <laughs> God. And I went, that is seriously worrying because that means 150 grand. And we both laugh because I think the most expensive, um, most expensive XC you could buy was 50 grand at that yeah. point. And he said, if it's over a hundred and, if it's over 120, he was going to laugh and walk out the room. And at the end of the presentation, they went, oh, and priced at 149,995. And he laughed and walked out the room. Did he? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so here we go. Finally, uh, yeah, 280K starting price for 765LT. Yeah, so they're free. You're going to be free 50. I so, mean, it's something like that, bonkers, yeah. man. Absolutely nuts. Um, so yeah, okay, well, look, people, let us know your thoughts. Are you excited by AMG GT Black Series? Uh, as so we're still waiting the official confirmation, the official release from Mercedes. But I think people do get hyped about this. I think people do like Black Series because they come around so rarely. They do, yeah. Is it, is it 10 years or something since that? I mean, I don't know. Well, no, SLS was 2013. We had the C63 Black Series, which which I actually think still looks great. That's yeah. another card I'd love to have a go in. But for me, the iconic one was the CLK Black Series yeah. that Jeremy Clarkson owned. But apparently the gearbox is a bit of a dog. Yeah. But, you know, what cars didn't have car, dodgy though. gearbox from there? Old yeah. car. And then the, the sort of unicorn car, which was famously horrific, was the S65 Black Series. Yeah. That I would love to experience just to see if it really, because it looks unbelievable. I think one of the- So rare as be- well. It's so rare. Yeah. Uh, but everyone well, says- a quarter of a million quid though, wasn't it? Oh yeah, like yeah. big, big yeah, money for that yeah, thing. Yeah. They'd, have a big, they'd have a V12. Thing. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah, the yeah. S65. Yeah, 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 like yeah. Proper, it's basically the Pagani engine. Yeah, yeah, The Sonder yeah. engine. Um, there is a car, uh, I don't want to teach too much. There's a potential no, that I'll get to drive one in Switzerland this year, if what? I manage to get to Switzerland. What? Let's wait and see. S65. Oh. Yeah. You're not that excited. What do you think I was going to say? No, no, no. No, I didn't know. So I just okay. wanted you to tell me. <laughs> okay. Well, look, uh, let's move on. Uh, I, I actually want to sort of segue slightly because we did the fact that there are 10 million AMG GTs um, uh, into a sort of conversation about uh, the... <laughs> it is know. late. <laughs> it is late. <laughs> we, we did warn you. I'm also slightly thinking in my brain because I feel like someone recommended this from the patron page. So I was actually trying to have a quick look to see if it was somebody, but I can't remember who. Well, we research that. regularly guys, as <laughs> you can see. <laughs> we really plan these things. Right. Yeah. I should stop just like having a weird moment and talk. Uh, so yes, what I want to discuss is somebody came to me saying they are considering 
a 240i BMW and an M2. Mm. It's about 150 pounds saving. So uh, to get the 240i. And roughly 10 grand difference in price as well. 10 grand difference in price. Is it worth stepping up for the M2 or will the 240i be enough? And this brought me onto a whole conversation is that now every sort of big German manufacturer offers like a sort of, you know, a half pint version, don't we? We've got S5 and RS5. You've got uh, a C43 AMG instead of the C63 or whatever. Um, and then on Beamer, you've got the two M240i M2. Are those half pinted versions now actually the better bet? to save money, but still get incredible performance. So, <laughs> oddly, we have a 240i and an M2 in stock at uh, the moment. How convenient. And an M2 comp. <laughs> okay, and these are so these are used cars. These are all used cars. Pricing-wise, do you know off the top of your head? I know you off to... the top of my head. Good man. The, M2, the M2's just literally come in, so it's not even advertised yet. Okay. So, uh, the M240i mm -hmm. is a 2018 car mm -hmm. uh, with 25,000 miles on. And it's twenty two nine nine oh. Okay. The M two is a two thousand and seventeen car with fifteen thousand miles and it's thirty two grand. So it's ten, 10 grand, grand more. more. Wow. Year older. Okay. Both black cars. Um and the comp is a twenty twenty car with fifteen hundred miles and it's forty five grand. Okay. So there's a twenty grand difference between the comp and an M two forty I. They are different cars, to be fair. And, sure. And and but it it always all depends what you want. The fundamental comparison between all them three cars, although they have slightly different layouts, they have all got that straight six straight six engine in it, the six pot. Mm -hmm. So for the road, the the M two forty drives down the road nicer. Um, it's got uh, an eight-speed gearbox instead of the double clutch, obviously. So it, it is is better. Not it's not better if you're driving like an idiot. No, no, but, but on, on the road, every day you use cruising, etc. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's it will be cheaper to run mm -hmm. in terms of fuel won't be hugely different, but definitely tires and maintenance and stuff. Of course, end product cars are always more money. You have to have run in services. Um, they're just dearer to fix when they go wrong. Um, and 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 honestly, for for the everyday person, like it's it's. So your answer is yes. It's basically yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. no yeah. For you, unless you're a real petrol head, that I I definitely want an M2 comp and I want an M2. If you're just a person that wants a nice car, there's nothing wrong with the M240, mate. I would actually say over and above that. If you're a petrol head but one with not huge means. If you don't have the money to go and jump into an M2 or an M2 comp, an M240i is actually a fantastic car that might be way more affordable to somebody. Okay, fine, you're not getting all that spandangled M wizardry and magicness, but you're still getting an unbelievable car, which put it up against to previous generations, 1M or whatever it might be, is usually as quick, if not quicker. I mean, if you go and get into an M340i now, that's pretty much as quick as the as the old M3. Yeah, yeah. So you're not getting into a lesser car. Okay, fine. You don't always have the trick suspension, all these diff you know different kind of components, like gearbox and diffs. Exactly. So pure driving, fine. Yes, yeah. the M car will always be better. Of course. But what I see it as is actually a bargain way or a way to save money and still get huge dominance still get great because a neighbor of mine owns uh, an m240i when he starts up in the morning the thing sounds amazing so the what the car that we've got i don't know if your neighbor's got the same it's got the m performance exhaust on it he and must because and i was just about to say that it sounds it sounds better than the m2 mm -hmm. and the m2 comp i mean the m2 comps are really quiet as well so the m2 sound really nice m2 comps are just really quiet because of the filters now. sure um but the, the M240i, because it's got an M performance exhaust on it. Sounds nice. Yeah, yeah, it sounds really, really good. Does this apply? You're going to have to help me out here because I don't have as much knowledge, but, but does this apply across the board with the Germans? So let's let's move on to Audi for a second. So I think uh, maybe, maybe an RS6 is a good way to look at it, but tell me if there's another part of the range that's better analysis. RS6, 100 grand or so. S6, I don't know what the savings would be. Half. Half. 
Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Because no one buys an S6. So, I mean, they're probably not that list. That there won't be. Mm. The, it won't the, be so dramatic list. Yeah, 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 yeah. But but they have to discount them hugely to to sell them the S6. And what a car you're still getting. Yeah. In terms of on the road usability tech functionality, the big thing which I always think is actually usually they have softer suspension. So actually, it's usually a nicer place to be. But the different engines. So the S6, okay. I'm, I may be corrected here, but I think I'm right. The S6 has got a V6 in it. The RS6 has obviously got the V8. Um, but just double check. I'm sure it's got the V6 in it. Okay, let me have a quick, quick look. Uh, the new S6 is supposed to have 440 horsepower, while the RS6 will have 550. Um, and let's do something else. Compare. Here we go. Um uh, you, yes, you're right. RS6 has the four litre TFSI Quattro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. S6 has the 2.9 TFSI. Yeah, so yeah, you're right. V6 hybrid and V8 hybrid. It's the, it's the RS4 engine basically wow. in the S6. So, so I mean, it's there is always a swing a, there. It's not the same. It's not as comparable to the M2 and the 240. Okay, R, so Audi's six. a little bit different where sometimes it's a slightly different product, not just a diluted version. But it's not too dissimilar if you're comparing S5 and RS5 or RS4 and S4, okay, because they fundamentally all have that 2.9 V6 engine in them. Sure. So um, you're kind of getting the same noise. You're just not going down the road as fast. Absolutely. And, you know, if you're turning into quarters and stuff like that, you're not, you're not always getting the full package. And, and for me, a lot of it comes down to styling. I'm a sucker for that. Yeah. Like if someone was to offer... RS4 over S4, I'd always be like, well, S4 just looks better and you get the of badge course. and like, it's way more, more desirable. But my point being to this guy's asked the question, should I just save the 150 quid per month? I'm a bit like, yeah, honestly, mate, I don't think the 150 quid for the M2 is going to reward you enough. If you, if you want an M2, sure, fine. But if you're not that fast, you're still going to be getting a great car. And then on the, on the Merc side of things, yeah, it is C43 and C63, isn't it? Uh, again, again, that's the same comparative to the S6 and the RS6. Obviously, the 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 the, the C43 has the V6 engine and the um and it's really soft. Yeah. The C63 is obviously, especially the S as well, has got the V8 engine. And it's a lot harder and a lot more focused. Got that's what I would say. Proper diff in it as well. And for me, they're the most different because I drove a C43 Cabriolet. <laughs> from the AMG factory last year yeah. and, and pretty much despised it yeah, yeah. and didn't actually even release anything about it because I was so horrible about it. It just isn't an AMG product in my mm. mind in any way. It's such soft cruiser. Yeah. And I feel like it's a real, a real marketing gimmick. And I think you would be massively disappointed. It doesn't if, even sound that good either. Yeah. If you yeah. thought, oh, I'm buying into AMG and saving a bit of money, I think you'd feel really disappointed. For sure. Whilst maybe that, so maybe the summary point being that actually BMW are the best at this. They're sort of, they're diluted versions. They're, they're baby M's, so they're not the full M's, but the M240i, the M140i, etc. Maybe they're the best at giving you great value for money, a fantastic car that still offers a lot and a lot of performance without the big, big budget. But I think, to be honest, BMW make the best value driver's cars anyway. Oh. Full stop. Like the, the M240i, the 140i, the, the, the M2, the M2 comp, the M3 and the M3 comp, M4 comp. I mean, mate, you get a two-year-old M3 or M4 comp for 35 grand. I mean, what a car. I am I am having such a big BMW loving at the moment. Like, yeah. I don't know, like three years ago, I would have like been sick on myself yeah, by how yeah. much I'm loving BMW at the moment. And you're so right. How attractive is an M3 comp right now? Like yeah. you just look at it and go, we've got one what? coming in tomorrow. <gasps> you are on it. Mate, honestly, all the cars that we spoke about, I've gone all in stock. C63 what? Talk S. to me about your M3. So got a late 2016 car with 20,000 mile yeah. M3 comp. And I think it's San Marino blue. Because well. they did do a CS, didn't they as well? Which I think was a step even harder. Was it a CS? Yeah. Yeah. It's a waste of money. Okay. It's not, and the, not the, the, it. the used car market demonstrates that. Okay. Because it's, it was 90 grand or something. Yeah. yeah I remember it being hugely huge expensive. money. And they're at 50. Okay. So M3 comp. How much is it going to be? So I cut you off. 
so it's going to be like 37, 38 grand. Like Probably all depends when this goes out. It might even be on the website. By Fair the enough. Okay. Well, yeah. um, uh, check it out. Uh, so yes, yeah, so I think in summary, uh, I'm really sorry. I can't remember who asked this question. If you are a patron legend, if you're not a patron, hey, we're always open to we're questions to and answers. We're here to help. E- yeah, yeah. Email us, DM us. We're not only here for the patrons as much yeah, as we yeah. love them. Uh, so thank you for submitting that and for asking that question. Um, now we're going to turn away slightly from car news because there's been some pretty huge news in the world of F1 recently, and it would be weird for us not to talk about this. Now, I messed up because I wanted to, and I will still plan to do race reaction podcasts, solo race reaction podcasts, basically as soon as the race is over, trying to get down here and record a bit of like, oh my God, what happened? (laughs) Um, And I tried to do that for the first race of the year, which would have made sense. And, you know, if I was a good businessman, I would have done it. I had an absolute disaster. I had one of those nightmare days. Everything was falling apart. Things were breaking. Batteries weren't charged. So I binned it off. So fingers crossed, there'll be one for the second race of the year. But in between all that mayhem, we have got the quite outrageous news that Fernando Alonso is going to be returning to the sport in 2021. He will be the man replacing Daniel Ricciardo at Renault. Where's he going, Ricciardo again? He's going to McLaren to replace Sainz. He's going to Ferrari. Ferrari, (laughs) Um, The merry-go-round continues. So I'll be honest, I saw this coming almost immediately when Vettel announced he was leaving Ferrari. Is he, he's retiring now, Vettel, and he's got nowhere to go, is he? Well, let's come back to that in a second. What's he going to Merck? Hold on. <laughs> we're, we're trying to talk about Alonso. Because this is Sam's in his element. He loves this. Oh, <laughs> <man. laughs> I'm love. frothing at the mouth. <laughs> Alonso, so look, before I rant, what are your thoughts? Oh, well, I don't really care. You don't care? Not really, as in, as in, he's a bit of an has-been, Alonso. Mm. I mean, he, is, he can drive, obviously, but... I mean, he's not he's not going to be anywhere near the pace, mate. I, I Do you think, not think? No, no. I mean, I think he's had his day, mate. He's, like, he's old and, and... It was interesting when Schumacher came back. He had longer out of the sport than mm. Alonso has, but it took him best part of a year and a half, I think, to get up to speed. Better driver, though, Schumacher than Alonso. Mm. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm he won so. seven world championships. I'm yeah, Alonso, but, but, well, but Alonso screwed himself with... Uh, team changes and political crap. I the, think the if cream you, always comes to the top, mate. No, but if you listen to people who've worked with both of them and experienced both of them, they'll rate them at a pretty similar level. Okay. Uh, I think Schumacher was a better team player uh, and a better all round F1 driver in his holistic package. But Alonso, I think on his day as quick, you know, and we saw it in 2005, 2000, well, more 2006 than 2005. Well, no, okay, fine. In 2006, <laughs> they went head to head and, and yeah, anyway, so right up there. But, but but it took Schumacher that time to get back up to speed. And, and whilst his Mercedes years are looked back on not very well, actually, especially in 2012, he was quick. He was very quick. And knowing what we know about Rosberg now, it made Schumacher's return years at Mercedes a bit more impressive. Anyway, I'm getting really distracted. No, carry on. No, no. I mean, this is great. Long story short, Alonso, I think he will be up to speed because I think he's a wily old fox, Alonso. And I, th- I, don't, I think he'll be quick. I think he'll be quicker than... Ocon probably is prepared for and expecting. I think the problem being Renault are in a in a in a pooey old place. Mm. Uh, people keep doubting their position in the sport, and I'm with them there. I'm not sure why that board can justify doing Formula One right now, but I don't see them making the right moves in terms of progress. Clearly, they are selling something because Danny Rick bought into it, and now Alonso's bought into it. So yeah. they've got some master plan, and yeah, maybe yeah. it's the new cars that were supposed to be coming in 2021, now coming 2022. So maybe Renault have got some huge thing that they're confident is going to make them a uh, competitor. Um, whenever Alonso's been at Renault, he's won races. So let's wait and see. My thing is, I'm like you, I'm a bit like, I'm over it. Mm. Like, come on, mate. Like, we also, we all knew he was going to come back, we all knew he was begging to come back. But I don't think he's coming back in an exciting way because I think it's going to be a bit of a midfield run. I might be wrong. A bit of a midfield run and then it'd be like, okay, off he goes, retires again. Like, uh, give or somebody else have, a chance. Have, have Renault had him back because of his sponsorship power? Well, that's exactly it. Well, yes, maybe. Good point. Very good point. And just brand value for the yeah. sport, for everything. What a story. Yeah. Like he's got huge commercial presence in of Spain. Course. and You know, like so yeah, I totally get it. But at the same time, snore. Yeah, yeah. Now, the interesting point that you made out is what happens to Vettel. And we've talked about this a few times on the podcast this year because what a big topic. He's one of my favourite drivers. Oh, you're obsessed. Um, I'm not obsessed, but... Yes, you are. Uh, <laughs> now, we learned recently that it was not his choice to leave Ferrari. 
Ferrari basically never offered him a contract. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think we spoke about it, the fact that I picked up on the rumours or the words that... He's underachieved there, Well, mate, Ferrari tried fair. to get rid of him. Yeah, yeah. 2019, they tried to boot him out and he said, no, I'm staying. So it's no surprise they didn't offer him a fresh contract. And it also explains why he's not sort of immediately gone, I'm retiring. Because I think he was a bit like, oh, right, okay, cool guys, cheers. Like, well, let's see what's on offer. Mm-hmm. I think he's been slow and cautious because that's in his nature and the other teams have had to react and make their moves. So kind of his options have dried up. However, literally within the last 24 to 48 hours, Red Bull have raised their heads and their hands as potentially willing and interested in tempting Vettel back. Now, if I was Sebastian Vettel, the very last thing I'd want to do is go up against Max Verstappen at Red Bull. Absolutely. The last thing. Yeah, That team is built entirely around Verstappen. Verstappen is arguably the brightest talent for the future of F1 alongside maybe Leclerc. Yeah. Um, And and we've seen how he cannot handle a competitive teammate. You know, with Ricardo and then also now with Leclerc, he's going to be miserable. But does he kind of accept that it's a bit of a last hurrah, returning to his true home, Red Bull, the team that kind of supported him the whole way up, gave him his championships, and he doesn't mind being a bit of a Raikkonen and kind of sitting there and picking up a few wins and a few victories and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Maybe if Verstappen blows it because of his young and... uh, uh, inexperienced mm. Vettel will just sneak up and grab yeah, the championship yeah, yeah. so yes do Red Bull want Vettel I wonder if that relationship has soured slightly over the years and this could be just the world of Formula 1 getting a bit overexcited with all the news Alonso is coming back and signs to Ferrari oh my god let's get Vettel to Red Bull Mercedes still haven't ruled out that they're not interested in Vettel I think it all depends on Bottas's season we know last year he started strong, then he kind of like weaned himself off. And I actually think George Russell is a much... Do you think he's that good, Bottas? No. Okay. Unfortunately not. I think he's good. Yeah. But I don't think he's that good. Okay. And, and He's got a good car. Is anyone in that car... Okay, this is going to sound harsh. Anyone in that car could win. Okay. He hasn't, I don't think, got it in him to beat Hamilton. No. But as anyone. I mean... Yes, oh, Rosberg. Oh, okay. okay. Do you know what I mean? And, and I think yeah, yeah. I think Leclerc or Verstappen... Um, question mark over Vettel but Leclerc or Verstappen if they were in that Mercedes I think they would they would but don't Hamilton. you think that arguably Hamilton's probably the best F1 driver ever yes and now especially okay fine he didn't really prove himself to be that great in Austria at the start no. of the year and he always starts off slow he, he always does, has yeah. a, a fuddly first few races which he can't afford to do this year Mm-mm. it's a short season we have no idea how many races there are going to be and it usually takes him five or six races to get up to speed yeah and it looked that way again in Austria, although he was within a second of Bottas pretty much the whole race. And He's then he, such a crybaby. Yeah, oh. God. Oh. Um, so I think now his his whole package is pretty much there. Over a season, my money would pretty much always be on Hamilton, even if you were to put Verstappen or Leclerc in now, just because of their inexperience, I think Hamilton would be able to trounce them. But he's only got a couple more years left, Hamilton. Yes, yeah. So let's see with Vettel. I think he will end up somewhere. You do? Um, I do. I hope so. I, I do. I think I actually put my money on Aston Martin. I actually put my money on Aston Martin. So, uh, who Who's Aston Martin's driver's uh, name? Sergio Perez and Lance Stroll. They're racing point. So Stroll's not going anywhere. You would think, but there's a bigger <laughs> conversation. There's a bigger thing now than daddy's bought me a team. Okay, fine. It's, it's bigger than that now. Okay. And, and if they can put him somewhere else if they can shove him over to Williams or Alfa Romeo with a big stroll paycheck yeah 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 keep his little shitty dream alive and get Vettel in as I think stroll Toto Wolff's now invested with that team I think all of the everything that's going on with Aston Martin come back to Formula 1 I think they probably are pushing quite hard for that I might be wrong but um, that's kind of roughly where my money is anyway I just wasted everyone's time for 10 minutes no I mean no, <laughs> no I okay, enjoyed no, that no. okay well there we go uh, I say I really will be working hard to try and do my post race reviews but um, there's just a lot going on I'm busy we're both busy aren't busy we there's, boy, there's stuff yeah. going on but hey thanks to the patron supporters we can devote more time to this podcast now and that's what we're going to be doing so we are, yeah. uh, anyway thank you so much everyone for tuning in Tony thank you for finding the time to come and record this week uh, if you are watching us on YouTube make sure to hit subscribe turn on the notification so you don't miss future episodes told you we'd get tired toward the end uh, and if you're listening to us keep listening to us on whatever platform you're listening to us on and if you want to support us on Patreon patreon.com forward slash behind the glass there we go okay we've done, done it? it yeah we've done it goodbye thank you for tuning in bye bye see you soon bye bye <laughs>